In this example, I want to take a look at using the mean value theorem for integrals and go ahead and apply it to this function f of x equals 6 times the square root of x, and we're going to do so over the closed interval 1 to 4. Okay, so one prerequisite that uh, our mean value theorem for integrals has is that this function has to be continuous over this entire closed interval. Well, thinking about the function 6 times the square root of x, well, I know this is continuous over its entire domain, and its domain starts at x equals 0 and works its way up to positive infinity. So this closed interval 1 to 4 is within that domain, so we're good to go. So let's start by looking at the graph of this function, f of x equals 6 times the square root of x, as well as the region that we're going to find the area for. Okay, so this mean value theorem for integrals. On this left side of the equation, we have this definite integral, which, remember, is going to find the area of the region we just looked at in that graph. So you remember that the, uh, this region is bound above by the graph of the function, 6 times the square root of x, and it's bound below by the x-axis, and it has that curvature on the top. And so what we're saying that is equivalent to is some f of c, which actually is a y value, multiplied by b minus a, which is an x value. So it's almost as if, and in fact it's not almost, it's as if we have this rectangle where the height is this y value, the width is this x value, which is the, uh, the width of this interval here. And we're going to take this curved region, we're going to smoosh it down into a rectangle, whose height, this f of c, is actually the average value of the function. And our mean value theorem says that there is this c value, which is going to be an x value, somewhere in this interval uh, that we're looking for. So it guarantees the existence of this c value. So let's go ahead and find it. So we'll start by doing this definite integral. It'll be from 1 to 4 of 6 times the square root of x. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that x, though, as x to the 1 half power. So I'll use a rational exponent there. And so integrating this, so we're going to add 1 to the power, so that makes the x to the power of 3 halves, and then I'll divide by that 3 halves, which is the same as multiplying by, of course, the reciprocal, 2 thirds. But let's multiply by that 6 that was already out there, and we're going to be taking this from 1 to 4. So let's clean it up a little. So we have a 3 and a 6. I can divide a 3 out of both of those, and it looks like we're left with a 1 and 2. Okay, so 2 times 2 is 4, x to the 3 halves, and that is from 1 to 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate this. So we'll plug the 4 in, and we'll plug the 1 in, and we'll subtract those values. All right, so the square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 cubed is 8, and... The square root of 1 is 1, and then 1 cubed, of course, is 1. So it looks like we have 32 minus 4, which equals 28. So what we're saying here, we have uh, done this definite integral, and we're saying the area is 28 square units. Okay, so I'm going to write this 28 down here, and the 28 is actually equal to f of c times this b minus a. Well, we know values for a and b, those are just uh, the endpoints of our closed interval, so 1 and 4. So 28 equals f of c times 4 minus 1, which that just becomes 3. So when I divide both sides of this equation by 3, right, my f of c is 28 thirds. Okay, so once again, the mean value theorem is guaranteeing the existence of this c value. So f of c equals 28 thirds. So I need to take that 28 thirds, and I need to set it equal to our function, which was 6 times the square root of x. 
Okay, so this x value here that I'm looking for is actually the c value that's guaranteed. So let's start by multiplying both sides by 1 sixth. And when I do that, those sixes cancel on the right side. I'm just left with the square root of x. On this left side, it looks like I can uh, factor and cancel a 2 out of each of these. So we'll end up with, what, 3 and 14. So the square root of x is going to be 14 ninths. When I do 3 times 3. So squaring both sides of this equation leaves me with x equals, looks like 196 over 81. And of course that x value is the c value that I've been looking for. That's uh, once again guaranteed by my mean value theorem. So c equals 196 over 81. And uh, that's the value that I can plug into my function to get the height of that rectangle. Let's go ahead and take a look at two pictures. One is the rectangle. So I've taken this area and I've smooshed them down into a rectangle where the height is this f of c and the width is the, uh, the width of this interval here. And then I'll show you that ordered pair where it all comes together.